And, and let's stick with our young people for a minute as the Black and Missing Foundation is launching a 16 city billboard campaign this month in honor of its 15 year anniversary. Black and Missing uh, has been established as a nonprofit organization whose mission is to bring awareness to missing persons of color, provide vital resources and tools to missing persons, families and friends, and to educate the uh, minority community on personal safety. So here to discuss the campaign and um, Black of uh, Black and Missing Foundation are the organization's founders, Natalie and Derricka Wilson. Welcome back to the Black Report, ladies. Thank you, thank you so, so much, much for having us. Absolutely, it is so good to see you again. First, let's let's thank you and love on you and appreciate you for 15 years of fighting uh, the black and missing, fighting for the black and missing, getting into that real good trouble that our culture absolutely needs. Tell us about the campaign and what you hope to accomplish through through the campaign. Okay. Well, 40% of all missing persons cases are people of color. And because they are not getting the same level of media coverage and law enforcement resources as their white counterparts, to be quite frank, you know, their cases are remaining open four times longer. So awareness is key in finding them. And as you mentioned, for our 15th year anniversary this month, we're launching a 16 city billboard campaign. Mm -hmm. So we're highlighting 48 cases and we hope to have 10 million people to see these um, these profiles and we hope that it could result in a safe recovery or at least answers for families and the billboard will be in cities like Detroit Atlanta LA and across the country and we even have a partnership with the Milwaukee Bucks who they're using nice. their vi um, their video board very, very nice. Uh, we'll have to continue to look out uh, for that billboard. So let, let's take it back and, and talk a little bit about the beginnings, the infancy of, of, of this uh, organization, of this foundation. Uh, why, why the start? Was it, was it, a, was it a personal interest, uh, extended family, a friend? How did this all begin for you ladies? Well, this started uh, 15 years ago. There was a young lady that went missing from my hometown of Spartanburg, South Carolina in 2004. And despite the fact that her aunt worked in media relations, she really struggled to garner that coverage for her niece. And a year later, Natalie Holloway disappeared. And me saying her name alone, mm. everyone can recognize that name. So Natalie and I decided to do some research. And at the time when we started the organization 15 years ago, 30% of missing persons in the United States were persons of color, mainly black men, and that number has increased today to 40%. So what we're trying to do is bring awareness to our missing. We need law enforcement resources and we need our media. And at the end of the day, we need our community so we can help find and bring our missing home. Sure. And so what are the, what are some of the common or specific causes uh, as to why we go missing? And then, you know, what should or shouldn't people do uh, when they think they've encountered someone who has been reported missing? That area is kind of gray. Do you report? Do you don't report? Do you have to wait it out? Help us out with that. Well, Oftentimes, when families are going to law enforcement, law enforcement classify missing children as runaways, mm -hmm. and runaways do not meet the criteria for an Amber Alert. And when it's adults, their disappearance is often met with some sort of criminal um, activity, and it really dehumanizes and desensitizes the fact that these are valuable members of our community. The other issue is there is no holistic approach across the country. Every jurisdiction can operate in a manner in which they choose. So some jurisdictions require a 24-hour wait, 24 waiting period, mm -hmm. while others can take the report immediately. So we really need our lawmakers to step in, create legislation that all cases, regardless of race, regardless of gender, and regardless of zip code, they are handled and treated the same way. Yeah, so there are some states that are creating uh, legislation centered around black and missing uh, people. How do you how do you all feel about uh, that and the effort? Is, is it is it enough? 
Well, I will say it's a step in the right direction. And these bills pretty much say when, you know, time is critical, you really need to be able to reach the most amount of people in the shortest period of time. Mm -hmm. Then we need to tap into the media outlets and we need to hold law enforcement accountable. So if we aren't doing our jobs and these legislators aren't pushing to protect those that are most vulnerable, then they're slipping through the cracks and under the radar. So we think that it's a right step and a step in the right direction, but definitely have much more work to do. Indeed. So we here at Fox Souls Black Report, we are looking forward to kicking off our Black and Missing uh, segment. Um, so to help amplify uh, the foundation's mission, what can our viewers um, expect when we tap in and, and talk about uh, this, this foundation and, and the message and really the goal as we continue this conversation? Well, first, we want to say thank you for partnering Absolutely. with us for a bi-weekly yes, feature you. of missing persons cases. And it's really a win, not only for the organization, but for the families that we serve. So you will get to hear from family members directly mm -hmm. about their missing loved ones. And we hope again, that it will result in bringing them home or at least answers for them. So thank you for this opportunity. Indeed, and before we let you go today, can you give us a, a, an idea of some of the cases that you're working now, how we can uh, tap in and maybe learn more about um, some of the uh, cases that are happening right now that you need you know, our help with, soulmates help with? Absolutely. One case that we want to mention is Destiny Patterson. She's missing from Chesapeake, Virginia. Mm -hmm. She's 16 years old. She's been missing since March the 28th. Wow. She walked out of school while school was still in session and jumped into the car with an adult male that she met online a week prior to her disappearing. Mm -hmm. And she hasn't been heard or seen since. So if the viewers can go to our website, bamfi.org, they may see something or know something that can help us in this nightmare for the family. Wow, my goodness. And I just want to add really quickly, you know, you can't turn a blind eye to this issue. Mm -hmm. So just because you may not know the missing loved one, don't just, you know, not take action. We need our community to get involved and start with who's missing from your community and share it with your network because it could help bring someone home. Yeah, and speaking of sharing, I just, you know, I, I, I belong, you know, on all across social media and I just can't scroll past, especially when it's a young child missing. I, I take a moment to, to read, uh, to see what has happened, uh, you know, to check in with the family, maybe do a little Googling. So, you know, soulmates, if, you, if you're watching, um, you know, let's really uh, uh, sensitize ourselves, if you will, um, to making sure we tap into those stories, especially when we see them uh, across social media. So ladies, we definitely appreciate uh, your efforts and we're looking forward uh, to this partnership. Uh, Natalie and Derricka Wilson, thank you so much. And we'll be checking in with you very, very soon. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you.